Video seven, we are gonna move on from our binomial random variables and now discuss a geometric random variable. Now previously, we had talked about the scenario for a binomial and we said this one didn't work out as a binomial situation. Um, so we had a standard deck of cards shuffled up. We're gonna turn over the top card, put the card back in the deck and reshuffle and we're gonna repeat this process until we get an ace. And we said, let's let B, the random variable, represent the number of cards needed to get an ace. So was it binary? Yes. Do try this again. Yes, it was binary. We were looking for an ace or we didn't get an ace. Are the trials independent from each other? Yes, because we put the card back into the deck and reshuffled it. So every card is truly unique and independent from all the others. But what happened for the number of trials is it wasn't fixed because I was looking for how many times do I need to do this process until I get an ace? Well, that could vary, right? Because the very first time I do this, I could get an ace and then I'd be done and B would be one. But I, more than likely, I'm not going to get an ace on my first flip of the card, right? Off the top of the deck. So the number of trials aren't fixed. This isn't necessarily a certain number of trials. And is the, probabil is the probability of success constant? Yeah, it was always going to be a four out of 52 chance because there's four aces out of 52 cards. So this was almost a binomial situation. And again, the only thing that was tripping us up was we just didn't have a fixed number of trials. So this, if a scenario has two outcomes, if it's still binomial, if it is, uh, if they have independent trials, and if the probability of success is still fixed and is constant. But instead of having a fixed number of trials, when we're more interested in when do we get our first success, how many trials does it take to get that first success, then that is going to be a geometric distribution. So again, three out of the four uh, conditions still apply from binomial and geometric, but it's the number of trials that differ. For a binomial, we have a fixed number. We're only going to do something for so long. For a geometric, we want to keep doing this process until we get one and only one success. So let's consider this situation for this random variable B. So we're going to create the probability distribution uh, in order to see a certain pattern emerge. So if B was equal to one, which represents, you know, I shuffle the cards up, I turn over the top card, oh, it's an ace. Cool. So what's the probability that I get an ace on the first flip? Well, again, there were four aces in the whole deck. So the probability would be four out of 52. Now, what does that come out to be? Uh, that comes out to be approximately 0 0.077. All right. So there's B equals one situation. But what if it took two cards to get my first ace? So you got to consider on the first draw, we did not get an ace. So we'll call that ace complement. And then in the second draw, we get that ace. So that ace had a four out of 52 chance, but what was the probability of not getting an ace? Well, there were 48 cards that weren't aces out of 52 altogether. And so what would we do with these probabilities is we would get to multiply them together, right? The, the trials are independent, so we just get to multiply these, it's kind of like we're making a tree diagram, but this is just one certain situation in the tree, in the tree diagram that we don't get an ace and then we do get an ace. Now that comes out to be um, approximately 0 0.071. So notice the probability just shrank ever so slightly there, but it's not exactly the same. What if it took three cards? So again, consider this. First card, second card, third card, boom, we get the ace, right? Four out of 52 chance that happened. But what would have happened on the first two? We didn't get aces. So we had a 48 and 52 chance of not getting an ace. And then the second card wasn't an ace, which is still a 48 out of 52 because we put the card back in the deck and reshuffled. And then we would get to multiply these probabilities together. And that comes out to be a slightly smaller probability of 6.6%. Well, continuing on. What if it took the fourth card before we finally saw an ace? So here we get an ace, 
We didn't get an ace. We didn't get an ace. We didn't get an ace. So first card, 48 out of 52. Second card, again, 48 out of 52. Third card, 48 out of 52. Fourth card, finally, we got one of those four aces out of 52. And if I were to multiply all of those together, again, I get an even slightly smaller probability, 6.1%. Now, you got to consider, how far is this going to go? And you might think like, well, it can only go to 52 because there's only 52 cards. Yeah, but we're not drawing all 52 cards. We're drawing one card, putting it back in the deck, reshuffling and drawing one card. Theoretically, could we ever avoid an ace forever and ever and ever? Yeah, right? Like all the aces could completely avoid being the top card in every situation. So how far do we go for B? And it really goes on forever. So we're going to consider now the pattern that emerges. What if B was a value of X where X could be and again, at the minimum, we got to get one success. So at the minimum, X is one, but it could be two trials. It could be three. It could be four. It could be five. It could be six. It could be seven. And theoretically, it's got to go up to infinity. So how on earth do we draw a probability distribution table that never ends? And we don't really. We don't have to do that. That seems kind of silly. Now, the great thing is the geometric distribution formula is on the formula sheet. It's on the AP Stats exam formula sheet. So again, it's it's close to the binomial distribution part on the formula sheet. And so the formula goes like this. Notice we have 1 minus P to the X minus 1 power. And then I'm going to put in this multiplier right here, times P. And this is really to the first power. So we got to consider P is the probability of success. How many successes do we want to see happen in a geometric distribution? We only want to see one success. Now, I like the way that they put the P at the end of this formula because your first success is going to happen when it finally happens. What happens before that first success? All of these failures happened beforehand. So that's why we have 1 minus P. That is our failure rate. And if it took X trials to get that first success, well, then how many failures would we have? We'd have X minus 1 failures. Y minus 1? Because here's the one success we want. So there's one less trial so that we can have that one success there. Now, some things to notice about a geometric distribution. Uh, and again, I, know, I talked about this earlier that the smallest value is really 1 for your success, because you have to get one success. Now consider for a binomial distribution, the smallest value is technically zero. We didn't have to have any successes. So the smallest value for a geometric always going to be one, and it's going to go really to infinity. For a binomial, it could start at zero and go up to a very specific value. It didn't go off to infinity. Now, I noticed the more trials that it takes to get a success, the smaller the probabilities become, right? Notice that the probabilities got a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, and a little bit smaller. So for those, my uh, pre-calculus -calc people, minded people, um, as the number of trials approaches infinity, the probability is going to approach zero eventually. Now, one question I have is, how on earth are we going to calculate the mean and the standard deviation? Right? Because if you think about if we were to do, if we had this probability distribution table, we would take each value times its probability, and we would add the next value times its probability, and we would keep going until we got to crap this goes to infinity. So how on earth do we do this? So thankfully there's some formulas that are on the formula sheet. These are, I'm sure, derived from calculus-based formulas because again, there is a limit to this. So the, the formula is just 1 over P, the probability of success. So whatever our probability of success is, and what did we say it was for this problem? We were looking for, back, 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 um, a success was 4 out of 52, right? So the mean, 1 divided by 4 out of 52, or you could say that's approximately that uh, 0 0.077 number. So if we took 1 divided by that, really we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, and it would be 52 over 14, which is 
13. On average, we would expect to take 13 cards to get our first ace. So again, let me write out that interpretation. On average, because we're finding the mean, we would expect to see our first success by the 13th trial. In this case, the 13th flip of the top card after reshuffles, right? We're not flipping over the top 13 cards until we finally get to see an ace. We flip a card, wasn't an ace, reshuffle. And on average, if we were to do that process over and over and over and over and over again until we saw our first success of an ace, that out of all of those many, infinitely many times we could do this, on average, it would take about 13 card flips off the top of the deck to finally get that ace. Now, you might be wondering, what if I get a decimal or a fractional value? I can't do that by the like 13.17th trial. And I would say, true, just remember the average is a theoretical value. So if you get a decimal or a fraction for the mean, it's okay. You would just say, on average, we would expect to see the first success by the whatevereth trial, even if it's a decimal or a fraction. Now, the standard deviation, also on the formula sheet. So again, it uses P, but in two locations here. So we have the square root of 1 minus 4 50 seconds divided by the probability of success for 50 seconds. And then you can calculate what this comes out to be. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So let's see. Square root 1 minus 4 over 52. Divide all that by 4 out of 52. And so I get a standard deviation of 12.49 approximately. So how would I interpret this? The average difference. So we're going to interpret this the same way we would any other normal um, standard deviation. The average difference between each success and the mean of, what was it, 13, is approximately 12.49. And really, this is the number of trials. So 12.49 trials is um, the standard deviation. Now, again, the mean and the standard deviation values, both on the formula sheet. So the you do problem. I have a new situation here. And I want you to just, for right now, you don't have to worry about what the final answers are for these probability questions, but at least use the formula to write out what V equals 3 would look like and what V is less than or equal to 2 would look like. And in the final video of Chapter 6 for Video 8, we will discuss the calculator commands to get us those answers. All right, and then I also want you to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of this random variable. Good luck.